you make a lot about this whole idea of sustainable watchmaking. Can you tell me what you mean by that? Well, um, uh, sustainability in watchmaking uh, means that uh, we take responsibility. Like an organic farmer, uh, not only cares for his product, mm -hmm. he cares as well for the environment, he cares for the animals, huh? he cares for everything around him. This is what we are doing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if we decide, if we decide on a new product, if we decide on details of this product, which means single parts, huh? and we, we, we are selecting partners, we are selecting those partners on purpose, not the one which is offering the very best price. Now we ask them where you are producing, how do you producing, uh, how, how do you produce, uh, how do you pay your your uh, uh, your, uh, uh, your, your 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 people. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, all those, all those things are, are of importance, uh, and this is what we, this is what we, we try as well to combine with our profession. You have to, con you have to confess that uh, Austria uh, has a very, a very strong, has a very strong understanding for uh, sustainability and and. Uh, 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 organic farming, for instance, uh, uh, especially here in Carinthia, which is which is not an industry uh, area; it's more a farm area. And, and uh, uh, Austria has the has the highest percentage on uh, organic organic uh, farmed uh, areas uh, in in, in the, all over the European Community. Mm. Uh, so for us, for us, sustainability, sustainability and, and uh, organic is something, something which is uh, not only a question for a few who can afford. This, this is, this is something which, which uh, yeah, here uh, attracts a lot of people as, as it belongs to their, to their life. Mm -hmm. In terms of the watches themselves, the, the, the thing that I can see where sustainability comes into the watchmaking is the fact that you offer a modular system uh, in terms of uh, what you offer to your clients and sometimes you, there's even something in the brochure that says that if a client wants to have a different function in the watch they can bring the watch back to you and you can change that function that's that's unheard of basically can you tell me how you came up with this idea yes uh, as mentioned uh, already that the basic idea of harboring 2 was uh, a modular system or uh, earlier the question how does uh, a watch, a watch movement needs to be designed in order to allow upgradings by time. Why? We are talking about, we are talking not about, or not necessarily about a luxury item. We are talking about uh, uh, a little machine for daily use. And uh, those machines, by uh, yeah, by by uh, just uh, common standard, is 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 a machine uh, as a machine which is able to work thirty years and more, mm -hmm. given uh, uh, that uh, regular maintenance is is is, is cared, of course. Uh, and uh, but uh, within thirty years, can you can you can you imagine how how we as human beings are 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 moving on and and, and changing within thirty years? So you cannot you cannot expect somebody uh, deciding today for a, a watch and and still f still liking it the same way in mm. thirty years. So we we thought about it and we found out well. Uh, when, when is the reason for somebody to buy a new watch, for instance, or more watches? Usually if the demand is shifting a little bit or, or if, uh, if the style or the fashion is shifting a little bit further or moving a little bit further. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we thought about it and we found a solution that not only the, the owner is moving on and, and, and uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, developing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we are able to develop as well the very particular watch further. Uh, mm. This this is the basic idea of the modularity, and uh, it works pretty well. Mm. So, for example, if I had a I had a time only watch, then I wanted to change it for a chronograph, for example. 
and it's it is possible. Right, it is possible. It's it is possible uh, uh, if you if you uh, for instance go for our COS chronograph without pushers, then mm -hmm. we do do not even need to drill an additional hole inside the case. We are just reusing the case. We are re reusing uh, main parts of the train gear and and uh, the structure, mm -hmm. and we are just adding the chronograph parts. It's simple. Uh, or it, it, of course, it sounds maybe a little bit simpler than it is in technical. Uh, but uh, this is you have to you have to consider that this is like a little Lego system. Yeah. Uh, so you just just put some Lego pieces uh, on top, and and, and it's, it's 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 different. Uh, or the tower gets higher. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. So where will your brand uh, go from here? Uh, well, uh, it took us took us about eight years now to create uh, uh, a collection. We say now we are we are we, we really can offer a collection now. We have some selection for our customers. Um, uh, one of the next major steps now for 2014, which is by the way the 10th anniversary of Hubbing Two, uh, is that we are launching our very own movement. So till today, we were we are still using ETA parts, not ETA movements, but uh, still parts from ETA production. And uh, due to their uh, decision not to supply any, any uh, outside companies anymore, we, we, we uh, had to, de yeah, we, we had to, uh, uh, to react and, 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 and go to, for a new direction anyhow. And we, we decided to go for our very new uh, movement, which is uh, going to replace those few parts uh, we, we uh, used to buy from ETA till today mm -hmm. and uh, since uh, we, were mo we, we were becoming from the very simple starting three hands watch to the Doppel or uh, the COS Chrono and the Fudorian which became already more complicated pieces we'll, we will go a little further mm. uh, in, the, in the future as well we will not we will not move to the top so so you will not you will not uh, uh, need to expect a minute repeater or, or something uh, uh, something uh, similar. Uh, nevertheless, we are offering tourbillons as well in combination with with our chronos. A uh, little next, little little next step on that. Um, uh, for us, for Hubbing Two is 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 important that that. Uh, the watch itself remains a very, very solid, very reliable daily wearable watch. That's that's the main target of Harbring too. So we we don't want to we don't want to create uh, sensitive uh, sensitive systems. Uh, so everything needs to be reliable and uh, daily wearable without without any any need to to take special care or, or to to consider that uh, you should not take it for swimming whatever mm -hmm. uh. you the, the way that you uh, um, the message that you are giving out to the to the public seems to be very honest there's this this whole idea that a watch is a, a useful thing at the same time it has to be reliable durable and you've spoken a bit about how you feel about luxury uh, as opposed to the way that you uh, give me uh, that you deliver your message, how how how, how would you respond to that? Um, well, uh, most of mechanical watches nowadays are are uh, gonna be gonna be advertised uh, uh, with the luxury argument. So so sometimes people. Uh, uh, answer uh, when uh, they they got asked. Uh, so so what is what is uh, or why you are doing mechanical watches? So there there is very often the argument luxury. But uh, we are we are thinking or I can still I can still remember when I when I was uh, about ten something like that. Uh, uh, that uh, it was a very common, a very common gift to to uh, yeah young young uh, 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 boys and girls uh, 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 growing up. Uh, the, the very typical present was a mechanical watch at that time, uh, as as a, as a kind of kind of sign for for becoming adult. Huh? And uh, so, so the mechanical watch it was was always very very 
yeah, normal use. That, that, that was the normal thing. Yeah? Consider, consider that the mechanical watch has been existing already before uh, we had TVs and, and, and uh, those kind of cars we know from today. Yeah? Mm. And, and now they should be luxury. No, they are, they are not luxury. They are not luxury. That's the reason why as well we say the, the mechanical watches are sustainable. That's, that's the reason why mm. mechanical watches still, still uh, uh, exist. Mm. Uh, because uh, they are, by nature, they are sustainable. Uh, mm. And uh, the, the, you, tell me, tell me any other any other uh, daily wearable, daily usable machine or or or, or uh, any other device which has such a such a expected lifetime period. Mm. Huh? There is nothing nothing around. Huh? And uh, if you consider that a watch, a mechanical watch from 1900 can still be repaired, and uh, very often still works with same precision like more than 100 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and you consider that quartz watches from the 80s cannot be repaired anymore mm. because of progress of electronics uh, then uh, you will agree that that uh, we are we are yeah living a little bit in a strange world as well <laughs> definitely so richard thank you very much for having me here today and uh, I had a wonderful time. I learned a lot from you, especially about this uh, interesting concept about sustainable watchmaking, something I've never heard of before. And uh, I wish you the best, and I hope that you will continue to produce more innovative and interesting watches. We'll try to do so. Thanks for joining us, and uh, the, the pleasure was on our side too. And uh, hope to see you next time again. All right then.